Hi, I'm Lee. Welcome back to the channel. Um, what we do here is we buy stuff to resell on eBay. Doesn't always need fixing, but we occasionally get stuff that is broken and needs fixing. Um, and today's video, we have. Um, I saw a DVD to VHS recorder, a Panasonic, and as we all know in the eBay world, they can be very lucrative to sell. So I saw this on uh, one of my local auctions. I'm not going to tell you where it is. I'm not going to give away my secrets where I buy stuff. Uh, but it's the first time, really, we've um, bid on anything in an auction. But it, the starting price was four quid. And for a DVD to VHS, you can't go wrong, especially if you can fix it. And so we took a gamble. It came up. Someone bid four pound. I bid five pound. He was just about to put the hammer down. And someone bid six. Uh, so I went another one seven. I, I thought I was going to be paying 20 to 30 pound for this But no the hammer went down to seven pound. I've got it Although at the auction house they have a 25% fee So by the time you've sort of paid for that it, it works out probably sort of just under nine pounds But we went and picked it up. Um, I'll show you a picture on here. The image of it was, was so dirty I was hoping I was going to get it at a cheap price because it just looked filthy and awful but let's show you it now. We've got it back home. I've not tested it, I've not plugged it in, and I'll show you why right now. All right, so here it is in all its glory. It is the Panasonic DRM-EZ48V. It is a VHS to DVD recorder, as you can see, and it doesn't look as dirty now as it did in the photographs. When something's this dirty, I mean, it's quite, you know it's quite thick it doesn't even rub off it's like awful so when it's this dirty I'm not gonna plug this straight in and turn it on to see if it works yeah and it did come with its remote as well which is again pretty disgusting and filthy so yeah so what we're gonna do with this one before we even turn it on we're gonna just take the lid off here um, we'll have a look inside and see if any of this dirt is inside because we don't know whether this has had moisture damage or anything so I don't want to turn it on and things explode in there and go bang it smells very electrically or smells very electrical like you know there, there could be some things that have got hot in there it just stinks a bit let's get the lid off here and we'll see what's inside I think I'm going to clean it first before I even touch it all right, so excuse me while I give this a quick clean up. Good old Dettol. Just using some paper towels for now. Oh, that's thick, thick poo. God knows what that is. It's like coming off in rolls. All right, so now we're going to take the top off. I've uh, just got, ooh, where are we? This side, screw up there, screw in the middle, screw over this side. And then we just got a couple on either side. And then the top will lift off. What's it like inside? Oh, I've got some pornos in there. <laughs> See how that, that has got warm, which is all over in this power side here. That is all at the back so something this has got hot so we'll have to check whether this fan at the back's working or not and we're just going to have a quick look inspect uh, these capacitors see if any have blown all the big ones this big one looks quite safe uh, not looking too bad just going to have a quick look in here closely usually when there's a tape left in the machine it's not working
Uh, let's have a quick look. Where are we? Right, so we're just going to have a quick nose in this area. This is all your power supply. Let's drag it forward a bit. This is where the power socket um, is and where it comes in. So obviously you've got a little fuse there. That we will that we will test quickly. So we're just going to bring our multimeter in on, put it on continuity. Beep beep. Just going to check our fuse. Fuse is okay. Right, so we're just going to have, I'm just going to have a quick look in here with my glasses. My alien glasses. So you can see how much that enlarges the picture by of it. Let's have a quick look. It's just crusty, it's just got some dirt and stuff on there. like a bit of crud in there just looks like it's all been a bit warm the fan fan actually looks really clean in there see where am I yeah so that flan looks pretty clean I mean it all looks pretty pretty nice and clean inside you can see the grease on our tracks here that is still nice and soft and fluid that isn't dried and all sticky yet so we might be in luck. Oh. Right, so this wasn't advertised as tested or anything. They didn't advertise that they've plugged it in and it's working. But at the moment it's all it's all looking quite good. Apart from obviously these horrible brown areas that we also had inside the lid. But that could be historical. That could have this, some of this could have been blown before, some of this could have been changed. Right, so you're with me now for the first plug-in. I haven't turned this on, like I said, I didn't want to test it without checking the insides of this first because you haven't got a clue of its history or where it's been or what's happened to it. It's a bit like at car boot sales though, if, you, if you're going to pick up a machine and um, it's nice and clean, and then uh, chances are it'll probably work. But if you see something that was as filthy as this, obviously hasn't been looked after. I mean, it could have been working, could have just been thrown up in a loft or thrown in a garage and stored there. Could have been fine, you know, but you just don't know. So when it's filthy, it's worth just taking apart and having a quick look. So we're just gonna put some power in the back of this. This isn't plugged in yet. Right, need the other camera really. Give me that camera, Nicola. Right, let's get the other camera ready. So this camera, I'm going to record the front of it. This camera is recording the top of it. You'll see if anything goes bang, and the other camera will record the screen wherever that is. 
Now I've got to sit my arse back a bit. Got a bit of light reflection. Right. We're going to switch it on now. Three, two, one. Fan spins. We've got to please wait. Please wait. Just thinking about it. Nothing smoking yet. Nothing's hot. Do not touch anything over this side. I don't know what we're waiting for. Please wait, please wait. Let's see if we can eject the tape while we're waiting. No. Eject the DVD. Nope. Oh. VHS has just unloaded itself from there, as you saw. Oh, now it's trying to load itself again. Still telling me to bloody wait on the screen. Let's try ejecting that again. See if anything's happening. Oh, EXTL. God knows what that means. Every time I hit the eject button, I get EXTL. Is that an error that we have to look up? Let's put our flap down here. Got drive selects and stuff. Channel up and down, stop and play. Sure, what this is doing, it's flashing up red lights and stuff in there, ejecting the DVD. Not sure what ext ext l means. Same with the VCR, um, VHS. When we're trying to eject, we're getting that right. So, let's have a little Google of this and see what that means. It looks like we're going to have some fun pulling this apart, finding what out what's wrong with it. Although the VHS mechanism did all come in and go out again, so not sure what all that is about. Even just pressing the uh, power button gives me EXTL. Switch the power off. See if we can Google what that error means, and then we can get in uh, finding out once we know what that error is. We can then start looking around the board and find out what the problem is. Right, so this was a simple one to fix. This uh, ext l that you can see in here basically means external link. Um, someone said there should be a button under this cover, but there's not. I've only got drive select. But the other person said, get the remote. We have the remote here and the yellow button, or just under the yellow button, you can see external link. So we're going to press it on the front here. Get the remote in to show you. Try and get it on the screen. There we go. So press external link. And there you go. External links off. VHS comes on. You can see the head of the VCR is now spinning. Our display has changed. And now if we press the eject button for the VHS, out she pops. So, this looks like it could be working. Let's try the uh, DVD drive. There we go. That. Ooh, that comes out and goes back in again. So that might be a sticky drive we need to look at. No, nope, it's staying out now. Push this back in, a bit stiff.
That seems to go in and out all right. Let's check our tape, that's loading okay. And ejecting okay. Right, so let's plug our HDMI into this and see if we've got anything on our computer screen. Right, so just be careful while you're moving this around with everything unplugged. You don't want to be getting your hands in here. I just want to lift this up. Oh, I've got this wrapped around my tripod leg. Could have a tripod falling on my head in a minute. I just want to see where the HDMI port is. Oh, it's just up there. Right, it's just in there. Just shove the tape back in with my chest, partially. Right, I'm just going to switch my monitor over, which I'll show you in a second. It's just going to press play on the VHS. Let's see if it's doing anything. Yeah, now we do. <laughs> All right, let's just quickly show this screen around my tripod. But that is what we got with the VCR plan at the moment, so that's not very good. But hopefully we'll clean the heads and see if that will fix that. So we're going to stop that one for now and eject it. Oh, it looks like we've got free view on here as well. Bargain. All right. Oh dear, don't throw that in there. All right, let's try a bit of Shrek. Let's push Shrek in. All right, now we've just got to swap this over from VHS to DVD, which it looks like it's going to do anyway. You've got a VHS and DVD select over this side. Yeah, looks like it's all it's going to play. So that shows we haven't got a problem with our uh, signal output because the DVD is going to play fine. Well, at the moment it's playing in 4x3. But we'll change all these settings when we test it properly. So the DVD is fine. My tripod is in the way of everything. Recording up there. <laughs> So, here we go, our DVD picture looks good. So, let's get rid of Shrek. And the tape, I can't wait to find out what's on that tape. Right, let's shut it down. Uh, flick our switch off here, turn the power off to it, get my monitor back to see what I can do, what I'm doing. Right, and let's give these videos heads a clean. Let's get some lights back in it. Right, so if you la watch my last video, we cleaned the heads on a, a VCR that uh, wasn't looking too bad actually. But yeah, so recording the heads on these uh, on the VCR, I've just got a bottle of alcohol here. 99% which is my favorite it is uh, this stuff here the isopropyl alcohol by Hexil but yeah 99.9% .9 minimum alcohol so that is our IPA we're using that I've just put into a little bottle to make it easier to use so all we do just tip some of this on our paper just let that soak in a bit there probably a bit too much just going to shake some excess off and then in here these little holes that you see at the bottom are where your heads are so we're just going to put the paper on there with our finger and then you don't want to be really touching the drum but you can touch the top we're just going to spin this round while keeping our finger on the heads And 
I'll see if they're dirty. I can't actually. You can usually feel. You can usually feel the hedge, but I can't on here. Oh, there we go. Feel them a little bit. So you're not pressing hard. Just literally putting the paper on there. I don't know if you can see on there. That is dirty. And it's got some dirt on there. So I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm just going to go and do the other side now. see see there we have got some dirt on it that was from the other side so we're going to see if that cleans it up and also while we're in here just going to get some alcohol on our cotton buds our q-tip and we're going to clean up all these legs all the pinch rollers and rollers and a uh, razor heads and basically everywhere where the tape goes around, all the tape alignment might actually clean up a lot of this um, grease that's on there as well. It seems to be spread out all over the place and we'll just put some fresh grease on there. But we're just going to go around and clean those legs. These, these do look quite dirty. So, so we can see on there, they're looking pretty dirty which is all going to transfer to your tape so what we're going to clean with the cotton bud let's zoom you in right so anywhere where the tape goes so it's going to be this metal roller that's your razor head I think that is um, all your guides here that will take the tape in and out and another metal guide there another guide for the other side um, I think these are our audio heads and timing heads in here that you can't see very well yeah so over this side i think these are audios and like timings and stuff like that um so we're going to clean these rollers these rollers this one here and we're also just going to clean this rubber roller a bit it's just to get any like muck off there don't use too much alcohol on like the rubber rollers because you are actually uh, taking a bit of rubber off but it will do just for a light cleaning right, we are going to take some of this grease off it's just it's soft than that but it's, it's feeling a little bit sticky so. just get the majority off with a bit of kitchen roll try not to touch our heads in here that we've already cleaned If you are going to replace the uh, grease, don't just wipe it off. It's best to get rid of it all and put new stuff on there. So we're just going to use some IPA on a cotton bud again. This will break down the break down the grease and get rid of it. a good thing with um, IPA is if you spill it anywhere and drip it over the board or you know drop it anywhere on the electrics doesn't matter it will evaporate 
by the time you've even put this back together. Right, now I've just got some lithium based grease. Um, it's what I've got lying around, so it's what I use. Lithium base is usually okay for plastics, um, but you need to be careful. I mean, white silicon grease, or silicon white grease, white silicon grease, you can use that on there. Uh, but don't use anything uh, petroleum based because it will break down plastics. Um, if you watched the last video, the um, the runners that pull the uh, videotape in, these were metal on the uh, other one I did in the last video, which I'll, I'll leave a link to up here, up there, wherever it is. One of those corners, oh, that corner I think it'll be. But yeah, these runners were metal, so using a, a, a different kind of grease would probably be all right. But as this is plastic, we're using our lithium based. And we're just literally just gonna smear a little. You don't want loads, loads attracts dust. Sometimes putting too much on is worse than not having enough because it will just detract the dirt and grime, it'll all stick in here, and all the uh, yeah, all the dust and grime will stick in there, and then you'll just end up with these grinding along and not functioning properly. So just a bit on a cotton bud, and just smear it all around where these runners go up and down. Don't worry if you miss a little spot, like, you know, you can't get under there, so you're not going to get your grease under there. But as these go backwards and forwards, it will spread this grease around evenly anyway. Right, let's move all these, uh, let's move the cameras around. So we can see the monitor properly. And you see the video going in and out, and if it's working properly. All right, two seconds. All right, we're calling a slightly different angle now, so we're just going to switch her back on. We can see on here. So we got please wait. Please wait while it boots up. Check there, all flicking on and testing now. So we've got our clock flashing. Let's turn it on. Hello. That's the monitor just turning on up there. Right, I've got a VCR here that I know that works, so we're just going to throw that in. Just put our tab down here. We'll click it over to our VHS. Oh no, I don't want to copy. Oh, drive select. Is it drive select? God knows. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh yeah, that VHS. Our uh, drive select switches between VHS and DVD. All right, let's hit play. And this time we have our picture. Our favourite. Our favourite A team. A pity the fool. <laughs> All right, we'll stop that before I get in trouble. We're playing copyrighted content. Let's eject the tape back out. And just out of curiosity, I don't know whether to put this tape back in because this tape could have been the tape that was stuck in there could have been in there for ages. I mean, it just looks yellow. I 
it could let's turn some lights on <coughs> this could make the the heads dirty again just by putting this in but let's fast forward on here if we can fast forward by some past the crappy bits although it's still spreading the tape heads around the drum let's see if this plays anything actually I don't know about the show the screen <laughs> I don't know what's on it so God knows what that is but that was the tape we had in before which is now playing so let's rewind this back to zero on the counter and we'll take the risk in dirt and our heads up again we can easily clean them it takes two seconds to clean our heads so we'll get our timer back to zero close no no we're on it minus 11 seconds so this is where we was originally playing the video and you saw there was absolutely no signal it was all just tracking noise now it's looking quite clear all right now let's see if we can get this we'll see if we can get this on a wide screen right so we've got our screen how it should let's try playing the tape again it's more like it it is still a bit wavy we have got tracking on here I think so there you go it can play about tracking but you would have thought it would have auto tracking yeah that's too far one way come back the other way right, so let's stop that there for now the only other thing we've got to do is test the copy function <clears throat> right so we're getting somewhere with this uh, i was just going to try copying now i found a, a dvd rw to write to it's going to try copying that but now the tape won't go in it goes in but the arms are not coming out to load and tape spinning the arms aren't coming out to load it just ejects it every time It looks like maybe this did have more than one fault or an intermittent fault. So what we're going to do now, there's something under here called a mode switch. I've had a look online and uh, people suggest it could be the mode switch. So we're going to have to take this apart, take the front off, take this chassis out. So let's try that. Alright, so let's have a look how this mechanism comes out. Got a few screws down here. There's a grounding screw. I'm just going to take these couple of cables out. Just pop out of there. Pop this one out the bottom. That's probably going to be a bugger to slide back in. Right, I'm just going to do these screws around here, the ones I can see. Now there's one down in here. Let's see if the frame will lift out without taking the whole machine apart. So we're going to have to take the front panel off. Probably going to have to take lots off. Yeah, no access screws from the bottom on there. one screw on the top and then it's got clips on the side and on the bottom there to get this front panel off so just 
it's got these little tabs there I'm pushing it. the front finally off just uses these push pin connectors in here there and there so they just slide off and so there's another screw just down in the front here that be it? Is it loose? It could be. So, oh, we've got our motor still attached just in this clip which will pull out that's it that is free so why are you not loading now right, so this is the this is a clip inside here that lets the tray move forward and down. So we're just going to spin this. Where is it? Oh no, we've got to turn the motor wheel. That's the wheel. So we turn this wheel. This should all then start. Moving this arm across. And then the mechanism loads. So why is it not doing that? So why is it not wanting to load that mechanism? And the tray comes back out. Right, so I've read, let's put this out of the way somewhere. Pile it up there. I've got grease all over my fingers now. Right, so I've read somewhere it could be some of these switches like this switch down here. I'm not sure whether it's called an encoder switch or mode switch. But it could be this. So I think this turns to tell it where to go. So that little novel was lined up with the arrow there. Right, and I think this top should just pop off. A couple of tiny little clips on it. He says. All right now, this was a, just a case of undoing some clips on the side. Well, not undoing them, but pull them out of the way and flicking this top off. It is very stiff because you've got tiny little teeth that go down the middle. Oops, sorry there. So lift, getting your fingers under the side wasn't too bad. And then it's just a bit of brute force to get all these teeth from out in the middle. 
you have got an alignment on here. I don't know if you can see. There's a little arrow there, here, which I think lines up with that arrow when you uh, when you put it back. I think that's in its eject position, which, as you can see, this all needs like a lining. So this is the wheel that it goes on. So I presume it will go into this bottom hole. No, it won't go into that bottom hole because it goes back on that way. So it would be this hole up here. It has got EJ on there for eject. So I'm not. I'm going to have to double check the alignment on there. You've got EJ, P, R, and DR written on there. Not sure whether that's going to show up. Oh, there we go. So there, so you've got EJ over there, drive opposite it there, and you have P and R. So each of them are going to mean something. Give our contacts a little clean up in here with some IPA, isopropyl alcohol. You have in here got grease, so obviously this part is sliding around here, so you don't want to be moving the grease on here. Oh, interesting is the copper contacts down here. I'm just going to give these a quick wipe. Just going to roll our cotton bud on them. Let's try and give them a quick clean up. Better dart on there. Use a bit more. Do those just wondering whether these pop out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. Let's have a quick check of these contacts and make sure that when they're going down they are touching. So I'm just going to push the little pin down to make contact with the bottom and then check for continuity over here. It's now all good, so everyone pushes down. It's getting through to the board. That middle one just looks like it's not got as much spring in it as the ones either side. I'll try and bend it up a little bit. Right, so they will have continuity when they're pressed down, so Just going to push this back into the middle. See, when I took it off, that was over in this position at the side, which would make it line up with this elongated hole here which I think is where it needs to be lined up to. So I am going to go with that because that's how I took it off. So these are basically your capstan wheels. So 
uh, turn in your play heads on the front. That belt feels quite good. You can see the uh, grease that's underneath here. That still feels quite good. I'm not going to worry about replacing that. So now we need to try and drop this back down. These are our little tape reading heads either side. Well, not reading heads, but it reads whether there's any tape loaded. The sensors go across, I think, to the, this middle bar here. And there's something to do with the um, sensing that the tape is there or the tape's loaded. <coughs> but apparently some of these can fail quite often as well. I'm hoping it's not one of them. Right, so I just need to get this corner back under here. That locates in that pin. Just make sure everything's aligned. Yeah, that pin's back in its little wheel under there. So that all looks okay. Don't squash that. That one went in that one. This one went in that one. Yep, they're back in fine. Let's put our screws back in here. See if we're going to have any luck with this. Well, yeah, I'm just going to put this screw back on now. We'll turn it back and see if our tape will load again. All right, turn it on now. Okay, please wait. So. We shall wait. Alright, let's recognize the HDMI. Let's try and load the tape. Damn. When you put the cover back on, Tricks. You need to open the door so it goes past this plastic clip. Otherwise, the uh, door won't open. Please load. No, no, it's not doing a thing. I didn't plug the motor back in, did I? Ah, let me shut the power off. Who spotted that schoolboy error? Turn it back on, try again. Give it back. All right, we've got our time on the screen. Let's turn it back on again. <coughs> that 
finished it up. Can't find any channels. But I've got the remote in pieces at the moment because I've cleaned it. So I'll show you at the end. All right. Please, please load. Ho -ho! Is it going to play now? Uh, no. Oh, because I'm on DVD still. Go on, play. Oh, it's playing. <laughs> it is playing. Thank God for that. All right, I'm just going to eject it and load it a couple more times. Just make sure this works. Why the mode switch decided it was going to be dirty and stop working, God knows. But loading up every time again now. Playing. Great, so let's eject and load a couple more times. All right, let's bring it back down to eye level and copy from DVD of VHS and vice versa before I was rudely interrupted by it not loading. All right, let's switch around. I'll just turn some lights out, it might be a bit dark giving you a lower level so you can see what I'm doing on here, although I might have to put the remote back together. I've basically taken the uh, remote apart in bits, just tuck, chucked it in the uh, chucked it in the sink, gave everything a good clean up. Buttons are now lovely. All the carbon on the back is still quite good. So that's actually, it's, um, that's dried out now. So I'm going to quickly put this back together because there's probably some things I'm not going to be able to do. And they're back. Right, remote's back together. Where did I put the DVD? Is it in here? Nope. Did I put it on at this one? <laughs> I have written a DVD. Let's see if it's this one quickly. <laughs> Useless. Took it out of the machine, I'm not sure what I did with it. Hopefully it's this one. Yeah, yeah, this is the one. Alright, let's just go and change our um HDMI. It resets the HDMI every time we change something. It always sets it back to four by three rubbish resolution. Right, so that's it, we're playing our DVD. So we want to go into our copy. No, I don't want to do that. I need to change the copy direction for the source to be DVD. saying I haven't got the cassette in, so let's put the cassette in there. I just want to rewind it. Let me get out of here. Let's 
switch back to the VHS and rewind it. Right, let's go back to our copy. So we want to copy Oh, I've just pressed that wrong again. So, yeah. So, you want a copy of source you probably can't see on the screen quite. Uh, 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 uh. Let me zoom out a bit more. Let's move your back. All right, so we're copying from DVD to the VHS. Copy mode, DVD video standard play. So we can change this to long play or extra long play. I'm just going to leave it standard at the moment. Copy time. Nope, that's fine. So, start copying. Let's see what happens. SP mode is selected. Is it okay to start? The title will be recorded as operated. The title will be recorded as operated. Please set up first copy. Well, we've got no title on ours, so. It should be recording now. A lovely beach at Fleetwood with the tide out. Right, I'm just going to leave that copy in. I think it's about 15 minutes of tape on here, so I'm just going to let that copy. So I've got a video of stuff I can play and not get copyrighted. Right, I've let that go for 16 minutes and stopped it. So let's go back to VHS and rewind it. Let's try this um, jet rewind. See if that's super quick. Yeah, it's not that fast because I've only recorded 15 minutes. Jet rewind is slow. All right, let's play it. See what the video looks like. Not sure why it's got that bit on the top of the screen. Not sure what these lines are at the top of the screen. See all them white lines? It's like a little gap, and maybe just because it's on a computer monitor. Who knows? It's recorded okay anyway. Fast forward is looking alright. Try a freeze frame. Not too bad, bit of fuzziness on the top. Nice, there we go, that picture's okay. Let's take that DVD out of there. Now we've got ourselves a, a robot writable DVD RW. So let's now rewind our tape and copy from the tape to the DVD. Right, stop that, 30 seconds in. Write information to the disk. Copy has been stopped. Okay. Right, now let's play on DVD here. Not sure whether you can see that, so 
Let's play that. And that is copy him from that is now copied the VHS to the DVD. I'll show you it's the DVD plan. I'll eject the videotape. So there you go. So that is that now copied to the DVD. So finally, we got this working. Right, so that's it. I'm going to stop it there. That was pretty much. All seems to be working fine now. All I'm going to do now is just take it downstairs, plug it into my proper TV aerial, just make sure all the Freeview channels and everything come on air, and make sure they're all record from Freeview to VHS. But this is all this is all working. It was pretty much okay when we got it. There was a few faults that turned up, but we managed to fix that. God knows why the mode switch decided it was going to fail because that wasn't even touched it was just left overnight so I don't know why that went but that was a quick easy fix too so it looks like we're going to be able to turn our seven pound into nearly 200 pounds I'm going to put up 200 pound with best offers on and take from there see where we go so there is money to be made in auctions I am certainly going to be looking at other auction sites now and seeing if I can find any more little deals like this maybe you should too because we took a chance on it and it's turned out to be a very good profit well, that's if it's all working properly when I finish testing it I'm gonna this is an old tape in here so I'm gonna get this out I'm gonna give the heads another clean give all the rollers another quick clean try and get all this heat smoky mark out of this lid which I don't know what I'm going to be able to do. Where is it there? I'm going to try and get all that brown out of there, see if that'll wipe out. But not that anyone's going to open it to check anyway. But we like to have equipment we send out looking good. So that's it. I hope you like this video. Please like, please comment, please subscribe. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. We've got a samson one of these to look at and i don't think it's got picture it's got sound but no picture so that will be the next one up on the desk so join me in the next one for that thanks for watching i'll see you again soon